because it's got to be green. Um, so Ed has asked me, he said, what do you want to speak about? And I said, okay, I'll talk about AI. Now, everybody I'm sure has heard about what's happening in AI and I'm hoping, so I'll ask this question. I'd love to put your hands up. How many of you use ChatGPT? Oh, okay, well, that's not bad. And how many of you use ChatGPT every day? Ah, right, there we go. Four. Cool, yeah, I, I thought. And how many of you think ChatGPT is wonderful and you think, well, I'm gonna use it a bit more? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> but, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna convince you that this stuff will change your work habits. So I'm gonna spend, hopefully, no more than 10 minutes talking about AI. Um, as everybody knows, you know, AI has been around for a long time. I did my first AI thing, like, um, it'll show my age, in, at university in the, in the early 90s, before you had these big computers and big hardware. So that's when I did my first AI. So the AI stuff has been around for a long time. The reality has been that you haven't had the hardware to be able to use it. You, you haven't had the hardware to do, do machine learning, etc. But it's changed all of our lives, as I'm sure all of you know, right? If, Every day on your phones, there's a lot of AI in there. If you use Siri or you use some other similar thing, that uses AI. Voice recognition, not back end, is not really AI at the back end, but voice recognition is one. So I'm just going to whip through the opportunities. I'm going to give you a basic on AI, what it means, because unfortunately there's so much misinformation about what AI is. Um, so I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to talk about different elements of AI. And I'm going to think, talk, talk to you all about how AI should be embedded in everything you do every day. And then um, just give some indication on where investment opportunities are. So this is, everybody knows Sam Altman from OpenAI. Yep. Right. So he's the one, he, if everybody's, ChatGPT came from OpenAI. And one thing to remember about ChatGPT, it's actually an accumulation of research going back 20 years. So whatever OpenAI has done, this is based on loads of research going back 20 years plus, and that's the accumulation of what they, what you know, what they've done is released on the back of that. So it's not only OpenAI on their own that's on this. There's a lot of different um, academics and a whole bunch of people that actually created that AI. So when when you when you hear that, remember that this is a sort of world effort. It's not just one company doing this, and it's absolutely going to impact every single company, every single individual more and more, um, and so. That also actually creates a lot of opportunities for all of you, um, either to use it or to create businesses on it or use AI in your businesses that you're creating or even investing in. So I won't spend a lot of time on this. I can happily send share, share the slides with you. You can have a look. But I just wanted to explain AI a little bit. Right. So AI is a really broad term. It means a lot of different things. And I can't put everything about AI means in here. But what it does, it contains technologies and algorithms and models that allows computers to learn things. And that learning is through using data. So you accumulate data and you build these neural networks, which are like your brain. So uh, you know, every day when you look, your brain is using, your brain is a neural network with how many trillions of cells. Machine learning is something similar, right? And the deep learning is a lot more complex than that, but I'm, I'm not going to go on and about it a bit more, but that's, that's what it is. So, if you look at some of the things that everybody uses today, things like computer vision, right, that's like machine learning. So, I'm sure you've heard the stories about, you know, training an AI on a cat to recognize a cat, right, that's computer vision. But there's a lot of different research that's happened in that, and it's a lot more advanced than it used to be. So, you know, <laughs> these days you can have a camera and you can literally be spotted anywhere so you know we have cctv in london and the uk everywhere you can literally spot it in around wherever you are right computer vision has advanced so much in the last five years and that's the type of machine learning natural language processing so when you say something you've seen all of these captions where automatically now when you say something whoever you are wherever your voice is they can actually tr you can actually see the subtitles so that again that's really advanced in the last last few years Generative AI is new. You've seen, you've obviously, everybody's heard about ChatGPT. Um, that's another type of machine learning, and all of that encompasses AI. And the future, and the ideal future, is what's called artificial general intelligence, which is, you could say, a robot. So if any of you like Star Trek, then data on Star Trek is probably what the, what the nirvana is. All this ChatGPT stuff and generative AI is really isn't 
intelligent, age AI is going to be. And it's actually accelerating. So if you've ever seen any of the research, you'll see that actually it's accelerating because of what's happening in generative AI. So what generative AI is, is basically a type of machine learning model. And it uses different types of AI, uh, different types of machine learning, and you can see if you want to read those at the front, you can read it. But I'm not going to try and explain it. All I'm, all I'm trying to show you is generative AI is just an element of the whole AI universe. And the AI universe is massive. It's not just about ChatGPT and, and uh, large language models, which is what generative AI talks about. It's a lot more than that. So think about, when you think about AI, think about all of these things. It's not just about ChatGPT. The beauty is, what's happened is, that generative AI and ChatGPT has enabled anybody to access that intelligence, in quotes, very easily. And that's amazing, right? That, that for me, will hopefully drive a large amount of change, a large amount of adoption. Because one of the challenges is, if you're trying to get a company or an individual to use things, if it's not easy to use, they won't use it. It doesn't matter how sophisticated it is, if it's, easy, it's not easy to use, they just won't use it. And so generative AI has helped to drive that change to help you adopt that really fast and you can see the power of it. Um, so one thing I didn't ask, which I'd love to ask is, does anybody know what prompt engineering is? Right, one person. So prompt engineering, so this is why you probably don't use it more. One of the things to do is type in prompt engineering on the web, all right? If you learn how to write the, ask the right question in the right way, you can get a huge amount of stuff. You can get a huge amount of value out of it. And so I would think about prompt engineering, go and have a look at whatever your jobs you do, learn about prompt engineering, and I can guarantee you, you'll get a massive amount of value out of that. And I can tell you, I've written 40 page documents using it. I've written this presentation doing ChatGPT and BARD, um, et cetera, right? So it absolutely can help you in almost everything that you do. So, I'm gonna be a bit techie, I'm a techie by background. And if you look at the landscape of what's happening, to enable AI to be used in companies, it's generally about technology at the sort of implementation level. On the other side, it's about how you change your businesses or how you create, how you create businesses to adopt that change, and that's hard. So embedding AI into every business and every business process is a hard thing. The technology is actually mature enough and available. So the reality is, <coughs> most of the technology is available today. You can actually use, if, you, if some of you may know what open source is, open source is technology which most of the web works on. Without open source, we wouldn't have our phones, we wouldn't have the internet. Um, Tim Berners-Lee open sourced his software when he wrote it. And it's available to anybody, anybody can use it for free and copy it and change it in whatever they want and there's no fee. So open source, uh, AI has a huge amount of open source around it. And one of the things to remember, open source is really important to drive that change in adoption. You, you know, with that, pr proprietary technology doesn't work in this world. You know, it's got to be open source if you want to get adoption to scale. So if you look at this stack, some of you can see it. I won't go into the tech detail, but you need to build all of these pieces somehow, right? All of these pieces need to come together to enable AI to be implemented and used in any business. So the opportunities are all the way in all of these things. Yeah, I won't talk about operating systems and whatever. What, what's most interesting is the applications you can build. What can you build? If you have all of this stuff here, you can build any application. So I was talking to someone today who's in, in the aircraft. They're building new aircraft. And I was talking to a whole bunch of use cases around how do you use sensors and data and AI to make the aircraft intelligent in quotes. Right? And that's, that's new, right? If you could do that, it's amazing what you could do. That's just one example. I'll talk about a few examples in a minute. So what are the key aspects of AI? What can you do with it? Why is it of value, right? One of the key things is increasing productivity and efficiency what you do every day. I use it every day because it helps me do what I need to do faster. I could go out and find information myself and go to Google and type it in. What I actually do is go on to ChatGPT or BARD, which is Google's thing, which has just been released, and say, make me a table of X, and it will make it, find the detail, make the table, and I copy and paste it, and boom. And that will take me two minutes rather than an hour or longer. So it really can change the speed with which you do things. Now, one thing to remember about ChatGPT is the data that it has 
stops in 2021. So anything you ask it, so if you ask it about what was the score with Arsenal the other day, it won't tell you because it doesn't have that information. Bard does, but it combines the Google universe together with Bard, right? So one thing to remember is ChatGPT only has data up to 2021, so anything you ask it, frankly, you won't find. So efficiency of productivity is absolutely <coughs> fundamental and really important, and it could do all of, your, all of your work every day if you start using it. I guarantee it'll improve it. It'll help you make decisions better. So I'll give you an example. And we're going to Italy on holiday in July. And I asked uh, ChatGPT to plan a five day trip in Rome, including restaurants, recommended restaurants, and timings on where I should go and how long we should spend somewhere. Within, within a minute, it told me. And I did it again, and it gave me a different set of things, right? So just imagine that, right? In, instead of asking a travel agent to tell me where I should go and how I should do it, I just asked ChatGPT within two minutes, I had an itinerary even with timing. So from nine till one, go here, from one till two, go to this restaurant for lunch, etc. Absolutely amazing. So yeah, that's just one simple example on travel. And more importantly, if you're an investor or you're investing in companies, there's a whole new universe of new products and services you can build on the back of this. And there are a lot of companies emerging doing that. And applying AI into every single, think about, I mean, you guys don't understand AI, but think about how you could apply it to anything and everything that you do. I guarantee it will make a massive difference. And if you're investing in companies, then that, I would always think about investing in a company that has AI embedded and they understand how to use it. Not just say, well, let's do AI, because a lot of companies just say, we have AI. The reality is they don't. So if you understand a bit more about AI, get some, some experts, I'm an expert, there's other experts in the room, to help you think about that. One important thing to remember, you can't see it at the back, but I put humans in the loop. So everybody goes, well, 70% of jobs are gonna disappear and we're all gonna be, you know, loads of people are gonna be unemployed. I don't believe that. I believe humans in the loop is absolutely gonna stay. What people do is going to change, like um, you know, like when you've got your mobile phone. How you did stuff before, right? You didn't have a mobile phone. You didn't have WhatsApp or anything else, and you did something else, right? Now it's natural to use use your phone to make a phone call or send a message. What ChatGPT and AI and other things will do is, will actually by nat by naturally you will adapt what you do. So humans in the loop is absolutely going to remain. So don't worry about your jobs. Just think about how your job could change and think about how you adapt yourself to make that change happen. Right? So things like customer service is a very interesting one. You know, customer service is starting to happen. I'm sure all of us have used chatbots. Most chatbots have been shit, right? They don't answer the question. They don't know anything. It's, it's like, you know, you guess it a couple of questions outside, it's sort of co configured parameters and they actually can't tell you anything. They go, oh, please contact an agent or get in touch with an agent. This is one simple example that's gonna change almost every company relatively quickly. So one of the things that you could do with customer service is if you imagine, pick your any company you like, if the company can embrace all of their data about their business, train it on a, on a language, large language model and other things, that, that gives you a unique perspective on that company. That company has a USP that allows you to access their intelligence, their knowledge. If you're a bank, you know, pick a bank, JP Morgan, whatever else they've got, they're already doing this. JP Morgan is already doing this, spending a large amount of money and providing their customers access to the knowledge they have, which only JP Morgan have, to about an investment strategy or whatever. Right? So if you think about that, that is going to change every single company. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, sorry, are you standing here for a reason? I won't get off. I'll do it quickly. So what are the challenges? The main thing is embedding AI. I've already said it once. Absolutely embed AI into everything. Think about how that's going to work. But it's actually a transformation activity. It isn't just, it's not simple. To change a business, you have to do a hell of a lot of work to embed it into your business. And think about how that would work. So what, what, are the, what are the biggest challenges? Lack of data. So most large companies have large amounts of data, but they haven't fixed it. They haven't organized it, they've got to fix that. Skills and training. There just aren't enough people who understand this stuff. So if you've got kids, get them to learn about AI. And 
you've got to change how businesses work. And that's a hard, long slog. It doesn't happen overnight. It's going to take time. But if you, the faster you do it, the faster you can get ahead of your competitors. So what are the areas of a future investment? So this is something that everybody know who Reid Hoffman is, the founder of LinkedIn? Yeah? This is what he said. So he said there will be a co-pilot for every role. So a co-pilot is your assistant on your job. So at the moment, if you're a developer, software engineer, there's something called Copilot on GitHub. And you probably don't know, if, you, if you're not in tech, you won't know what GitHub is. But GitHub helps you write code. So instead of trying to write code from scratch, you go to GitHub and say, I'm writing something, you have Copilots beside you, and it will help you write code 70% faster. So if you think about your jobs, every single role within two to five years, everybody's job will have a Copilot, and that's just one massive opportunity. So if you imagine building those Copilots, how do you do it, right? That's, that's an opportunity there. You can't see this. Very simply, it's a large market and there's a lot of opportunity. <laughs> I'm happy to send you a slide if you want, but it's a large market and lots of opportunity. Ah, I wanted to show you this. I put this here because this is generated by Dali. Dali is a visualization tool where you type words in and what you want to see in a picture and it creates it. And this is, this is I, I didn't create it, it was on, on, the, on the website, but it created that, right? Amazing. So where are the opportunities? These are the four industries, healthcare, financial services, manufacturing, transportation. These are some of the most, and I asked ChatGPT and I asked Bard to tell me that's what it came up with. So I didn't come up with this, this is what Bard and ChatGPT, and both of them came up with the same thing. So there you go, right? There is synchrony. So some of the very basic ideas, market ops and content creation. So some of the content creation stuff I mentioned to you already, Product development, how can you design better products and services? Financial services and banking, huge amounts of opportunity and change. And if, you, if you're looking at companies in those spaces, look at them closely, think of AI fits. If you don't have that, don't invest. So, quick summary. So I literally put in what I was gonna talk about into Bard, and I said, give me a summary that's the question I put in. Summarizing three bullet points, all of the questions asked above, who for an audience or investors, make it exciting and funny. <laughs> and I asked it to do it, it says, artificial intelligence is the future and investors who get in early will be laughing all the way to the bank. There you go. <laughs> AI has already been used to revolutionize a wide range of industries from healthcare to transportation. The potential for AI is limitless and investors don't get in on board now will soon left behind. So, what are you waiting for? Invest in AI now. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> oh, sorry. thank me and ChatGPT and Bard, because they helped me write this. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Great, so our next uh, 